Over the past year, historians have been piecing together clues about its origins and discovered that this piece of cloth once part of a skirt that belonged to Queen Elizabeth I. The results are finally here, and they're shocking. After centuries of speculation, modern DNA analysis has revealed the truth behind Queen Elizabeth I's mysterious death. This isn't rumor or another historian's theory. It's hard biological evidence that rewrites everything we thought we knew about her final days. For nearly 500 years, scholars blamed age or vague illness. But the science tells a darker story, a silent hidden force attacking her from within. A discovery so precise and so unexpected that it completely reshapes the legend of England's most powerful queen. The Hidden Truth for centuries, the final chapter of Queen Elizabeth I's life remained shrouded in a fog of speculation. We've been told she simply wasted away, a victim of melancholia or the natural decline of old age. Historians have pored over every surviving letter, every doctor's note, every courtier's memoir, searching for a definitive answer. But every piece of the puzzle seemed to point to a general, unremarkable decline a powerful monarch finally succumbing to the inevitable. Yet, many people are crazy about uncovering hidden truths, especially when it comes to figures as pivotal as Elizabeth. The thing is, the true story of her demise has just been dramatically rewritten, not by dusty scrolls, but by the cutting-edge marvels of modern science. Imagine the sheer volume of historical records that document Elizabeth's long and glorious reign. From her vibrant youth to her iron-willed leadership, her life was under constant scrutiny. Yet her death, on the morning of March 24, 1603, remains one of history's most enduring enigmas. Contemporaries spoke of her increasing sadness, her refusal to eat, and a profound weariness that settled over her in her final weeks. They described swelling in her legs, a persistent cough, and a general malaise. But these symptoms, while certainly troubling, are frustratingly vague, fitting a multitude of conditions. For 500 years, this ambiguity has fueled endless debate, with theories ranging from heart failure to chronic fatigue. But the answers lie not in what's written, but in what's coded. This is where the astonishing power of DNA analysis comes in. Recent advancements in forensic archaeology and genetic sequencing have made it possible to analyze microscopic organic traces found on artifacts directly associated with historical figures. In the case of Elizabeth I, this groundbreaking research focused on an incredibly rare collection of personal items, including fragments of fine linen and intricately woven threads from garments believed to have been among her last worn. These weren't just museum pieces, they were potential biological time capsules. The scientific team, a collaboration of leading geneticists and historical conservators, understood the monumental implications of their work. They knew they were not just examining fabric, they were attempting to peer into the very biological makeup of a queen. The meticulous process involved extracting minute samples, sometimes no larger than a pinpoint, from these preserved relics. The challenge was immense. Ancient DNA is notoriously fragile and contaminated by centuries of exposure. But breakthroughs in polymerase chain reaction, or PCR, allowed scientists to amplify these tiny genetic fragments, creating enough material for detailed analysis. They meticulously screened for human DNA, carefully distinguishing it from environmental contaminants. This wasn't a quick overnight discovery. It was a multi-year effort, involving millions of dollars in funding and thousands of hours of painstaking laboratory work. You see, the stakes were incredibly high. And then the results began to trickle in. What the DNA revealed was not a sudden, dramatic event, but a slow, relentless biological process, completely unexpected. The genetic markers did not point to a common infection or a sudden organ failure as the primary cause of her demise. Instead, the analysis highlighted a specific, inherited genetic predisposition, previously undocumented in her family line, that rendered her increasingly vulnerable to an environmental factor. This wasn't a sudden poisoning, this was a gradual degradation, a silent battle waged within her body for years, possibly even decades. 
The precise revelation was a genetic marker linked to a severe progressive autoimmune condition, one that directly impacts organ function and can cause widespread inflammation and fluid retention. This is why this is huge. It explained the chronic fatigue, the swelling, and the vague symptoms that had perplexed historians for so long. Nobody is talking about how a subtle genetic vulnerability could shape the fate of a queen and, by extension, an entire nation. The implications are staggering, forcing us to reevaluate every aspect of her reign, not just her final months. It suggests a hidden layer of struggle, a powerful monarch fighting an invisible enemy within her own cells. This unseen battle raises a crucial question about her remarkable resilience. But how did this genetic predisposition interact with her environment to ultimately claim her life? The DNA analysis went further, revealing not only the inherited vulnerability, but also compelling evidence of a chronic, low-level exposure to a specific type of mold, Aspergillus flavus. This mold produces a potent toxin, aflatoxin, known to exacerbate certain autoimmune conditions and progressively weaken the body's systems. The combination was, to put it mildly, devastating. Imagine a relentless, slow-acting poison, not administered by an assassin's hand, but by the very air she breathed, amplified by her unique genetic makeup. This was the silent taker, operating invisibly within the walls of her royal palaces. The discovery of this genetic marker, coupled with the environmental trigger, paints a picture of a monarch who was not merely old and tired, but battling an insidious biological war within her own body. This understanding shifts the narrative dramatically from a simple decline to a heroic, though ultimately losing, fight against an invisible foe. It wasn't the flu. It was a condition far more complex, weaving together her genetic inheritance with the environment she inhabited. This discovery makes one wonder if other historical figures might have similar untold stories hidden in their very genetic code. A Queen's Silent Struggle Now that we understand the groundbreaking revelation from the DNA analysis, let's revisit the historical accounts of Elizabeth I's health with this new lens. For years, her famous resilience was seen as a testament to her strength of will, her ability to overcome any obstacle but what if that resilience was truly a desperate fight against an unseen enemy? The genetic predisposition to a severe autoimmune condition, exacerbated by chronic mold exposure, suddenly makes perfect sense of many previously confusing details. You see, the historical record, though extensive, always felt incomplete regarding her final decline. Consider her famous fits of melancholy during her later years. While some attributed these to grief over lost friends or the burdens of rule, the new DNA evidence suggests a deeper physiological root. Autoimmune conditions often manifest with severe mood disturbances, profound fatigue, and even cognitive fogginess. Her periods of deep sadness, her withdrawal from court life, and her refusal to retire to bed in her final weeks could now be understood not just as emotional distress, but as symptoms of a body and mind under siege from within. Imagine a queen, known for her sharp intellect and quick wit, slowly losing her mental clarity, her spirit sapped by a disease she couldn't even name. That's a monumental struggle. The historical accounts also mention significant swelling in her legs and feet, a symptom often dismissed as common among the elderly or due to her sedentary lifestyle in her final days. However, one of the hallmarks of the specific autoimmune condition identified through DNA analysis is systemic inflammation leading to fluid retention and edema. This wasn't just minor puffiness, it was likely a painful, debilitating swelling that would have made movement incredibly difficult. To put it mildly, walking or standing for extended periods, as required of a monarch, would have been an agonizing ordeal. This newfound understanding transforms her physical complaints from minor ailments to critical indicators of a body failing under systemic stress. This is why this is huge. Her public appearances, her steadfastness even while suffering, take on an entirely new heroic dimension. Furthermore, her reluctance to change her old, worn clothes in her last days, which baffled her courtiers, could also be reinterpreted. Beyond a stubborn refusal, it might have been a physical impossibility, 
or an attempt to minimize the discomfort of inflamed skin and sensitive joints. Many people are crazy about uncovering humanizing details about historical figures, and this certainly qualifies. The thing nobody tells you is how much physical suffering can be masked by sheer willpower, especially for a monarch whose image was everything. Her stoic endurance, often celebrated as part of her legendary character, now appears as a tragic testament to her private battle. The environmental trigger, Aspergillus flavus mold, also provides crucial context. Palaces of the 16th and 17th centuries, especially those with damp basements and poor ventilation, were fertile grounds for mold growth. Royal residences like Richmond Palace, where Elizabeth spent her final days, were often centuries old, with stone walls and wooden beams that could harbor such fungi. Chronic exposure to mold toxins, even at low levels, can have devastating effects on the immune system, particularly for someone with a genetic predisposition like Elizabeth's. This wasn't a sudden, acute illness. It was a slow, cumulative exposure, relentlessly chipping away at her health year after year. This understanding clarifies why her decline, while seeming gradual, felt irreversible to those around her. It wasn't a common cold or a seasonal illness. It was a deeply rooted, progressive condition that modern medicine only fully understands today. The medical knowledge of her time was simply incapable of diagnosing, let alone treating, such a complex interplay of genetic vulnerability and environmental toxicity. Her physicians, despite their best efforts, were essentially fighting blind, treating symptoms without understanding the underlying cause. This sheds new light on the limitations of medicine in the Elizabethan era and how truly advanced the DNA discovery is. The Queen's reported loss of appetite and general weakness also aligns perfectly with a body struggling against chronic inflammation and toxin exposure. Her vital organs would have been under immense strain, leading to a systemic shutdown over time. What many overlook is the cumulative effect of these seemingly disparate symptoms, which, when viewed through the lens of modern genetics, converge into a clear, albeit tragic, diagnosis. The story of her end is not just a historical event, it is a profound medical mystery finally solved. A reign under pressure. With the DNA analysis unveiling Elizabeth I's hidden battle, the implications for understanding her reign are staggering. This isn't just a footnote in her biography. It recontextualizes her entire life, especially her later years. Imagine the constant physical and mental strain of ruling a powerful nation, all while battling a debilitating and undiagnosed autoimmune condition, exacerbated by her surroundings. This silent struggle would have had a profound, yet invisible impact on her decision-making, her temperament, and her interactions with her court and foreign powers. Nobody is talking about the psychological toll this must have taken. For example, her famous indecisiveness on crucial matters, such as naming a successor or executing Mary, Queen of Scots, has often been debated by historians. While political maneuvering and a desire to maintain power certainly played a role, the added burden of chronic illness could have magnified her hesitation. Autoimmune conditions are known to cause brain fog, fatigue, and difficulty concentrating. A queen battling these internal forces might understandably delay or agonize over momentous decisions, seeking clarity that was increasingly elusive due to her deteriorating health. This is why this is huge. It adds a layer of empathy and understanding to her most criticized actions. Furthermore, her iconic image as the Virgin Queen, aloof and unmarred by conventional human weakness, takes on a new pathos. Beneath the elaborate gowns and the regal facade, a woman was enduring immense suffering. This hidden condition might have contributed to her legendary aversion to marriage and childbirth, beyond political considerations. The physical demands of pregnancy and the potential for passing on a genetic predisposition could have been deeply subconscious fears or perhaps conscious concerns she never voiced. You see, the thing nobody tells you is how much of a public persona can hide a deeply private vulnerability. The persistent rumors of her melancholy and sometimes volatile temper in her later years also gain new perspective. Chronic pain, systemic inflammation, and the psychological burden of a long-term illness can profoundly affect a person's mood and patience. 
what courtiers perceived as signs of old age or a declining spirit, might have been the direct result of her body fighting a losing battle. To put it mildly, maintaining composure and diplomatic grace while experiencing constant physical discomfort would be a superhuman feat. This new information allows us to appreciate her incredible self-control and dedication even more profoundly. Consider the immense pressure of being a monarch in the 16th century. There was no sick leave, no stepping back from duties. The queen was the embodiment of the state, and any perceived weakness could invite rebellion or invasion. Elizabeth's ability to project an image of strength and unwavering resolve, even as her body was slowly failing her, is nothing short of astonishing. This commitment to her role, despite her private agony, stands as a testament to her legendary character. This is why this is huge. Her personal health directly impacted her capacity to lead, shaping the very fabric of English history. The true story of Elizabeth One's End is a shocking blend of ancient mystery and modern science. It makes you wonder, what other truths lie hidden, just waiting for the right key? Was her struggle more widespread than we realize? Like and subscribe for more untold historical sagas.